Hi friends, welcome back. I hope you're having a wonderful week, as always. Uh, we are now in for volume four of this series, I guess. Um, not much going on here, things are fine. Um, yeah, Halloween was yesterday, happy late Halloween. Happy Dia de los Muertos. I'm never sure if it's de los muertos or just Dia de Muertos. I feel like I've heard it both ways. Please let me know down below. I don't want to get it wrong. I think it's Dia de los Muertos. Or digress. That's not why we're here today. But if you observe, if you celebrate either, happy day. <laughs> um... I normally record on Thursday nights, but I figure with everyone trick-or-treating around here, it's going to be kind of loud. Turns out it was extremely quiet. I could have, but we're here tonight on Friday, so let's get started, shall we? Like I said, I do hope you've had a great week. I hope you've had a great day. Let's delve into some problems of some people who are not having a great day or probably a great week. Am I the problem for refusing to let my mother-in-law redecorate our nursery. So I, 26 female, am currently 32 weeks pregnant with mine and my husband Felix's, 27 male, first child. Things have been going well, and one of the great things is that Felix is a builder, and so everything with the nursery went pretty smoothly, pretty fast. We agreed at the start what kind of vibe we wanted to go with, and it's pretty much already done. Figured that we'd get it sorted as soon as possible, so it wasn't another thing to worry about later. My mother-in-law has always been a bit of a nightmare, but has been better since the news that I'm pregnant, though not without issue. For example, she told me that I should lose some weight, and that it wasn't healthy for me or the baby. She knows I used to struggle with anorexia, and I'm not any sort of unhealthy weight. In the past, I've kept my mouth shut and let Felix deal with her. As the nursery has almost been completed, she suddenly decided to invite herself around more. I work from home currently, and she comes in on the regular, ask, and asks me when I'm going to have lunch, and, oh, could you just pop me in something too? And then we'll wander into the nursery and start rearranging things. I know this sounds stupid, but once she literally bought an Ikea bag full of stuff that she put in there, it doesn't match. But I've never said anything beyond, Oh, thanks so much for the thought, etc. Yesterday, when she came around uninvited, she looked me up and down and said, Really? Joggers? Thank God Felix isn't here. And then walked into the nursery and started asking me where the pillow she'd put in the crib had gone, why I'd taken out the fairy lights hanging on the wall right by it, etc. I explained that they were potential safety hazards to the future baby that I'd, and that I'd taken them out. She started with, Oh, well, I've had three children, and I really think you should take more of my advice. And then looked me in the eyes and said, You're really not going to be a good mother at this rate. I don't know if it was the pregnancy hormones, but I just stared at her for a moment and then told her to get out of the house. I'd been up all night and had loads of work and wasn't in the mood. She got very uptight about it and left. Felix says he's going to talk to her and tell her that she shouldn't be reorganizing anything without our permission. But I don't know if it was just the hormones and I'm being unreasonable. Am I the problem? No. <laughs> Not even close. I would definitely take a break from this mother-in-law. I would let the spouse handle her from here on out. She has absolutely no right, no authority, and frankly, no tact to be coming into your home, rearranging your child's room, and then having the absolute breathtaking audacity to ask where her stuff is. <laughs> I would have told her this poster was much more kind about it than I would have been. Actually, probably not, but in my own head, I would have been much more rude. <laughs> I, you know, mentally, I would have told her, it's all back in that Ikea bag for you to take to your house for when you have a child and you can decorate that room however you want. Until then, this is 
my child, my husband's child. We will decide how this nursery is, and you are free to gift whatever you want, and we are free to use or not use whatever we want. Personally, I'm of the mindset that when I give a gift, it's given. There are no strings attached. I don't expect to see anyone wearing what I give them, hanging up any artwork that I've given them. I give it because I was thinking of the person. If it's not to their taste, they can re-gift it to someone else, donate it, return it, whatever floats their boat. The gift has been given. It's out of my hands at that point. There is no, oh, you know, I haven't seen you wear that sweater that I gave you. Maybe they don't like it. Maybe it's the wrong size. Just because I gave it to them does not automatically mean they have to like it. And the fact that this mother-in-law is just walking into this baby's nursery and just placing things without even talking to the parents about it shows that she is far too comfortable with this. And as kindly as possible if you want to salvage this relationship. But she needs to be, this is going to sound harsh, but she needs to be put in her place. And I don't necessarily mean that rudely or aggressively, but she needs to understand this is not her house. This is not her child. She has raised her, she said, three kids. She's raised her children how she wants to. As for taking her advice, holy cannoli, do things change so fast in terms of what's considered the most healthy and the safest choice for babies. Things, even when my daughter was born, I, I'm sure things have changed. She's 13 now, so I'm sure things have changed over the last 13 years. When she gets old enough to have kids, if she chooses to have kids, I would like to think I would have enough awareness to not say, oh, well, I did this when you were a kid and you're fine, because that's not how it works. <laughs> there are improvements to it just, it just, it, the point I'm failing miserably to make in terms of the advice thing what was safe a generation, a half a generation ago, may not necessarily be considered the safest option. If this grandmother-to-be is serious about wanting to be most aware of what this current safety recommendations are for this child, she needs to educate herself. Now, I'm not saying that she doesn't know. I, I don't know what she knows, but you know, maybe go with the parents to be to their pediatrician's appointment, take an online class, go to, you know, a, a baby safety class. That would be great. Everyone should go to that. That's going to be in this child's life. So to the point of the question of this post, no, the parents to be are not the problem at all. This grandmother has grossly overstepped boundaries um, and is threatening to Ruin the relationship that she could have with these um, parents-to-be and her future grandchild because, frankly, if I don't trust, especially with a newborn, if I don't trust the person, they're not going to be in this child's life. Period. So, uh, no, this grandmother-to-be, if she were in my life, going to be in a, for a rude awakening. <laughs> Just my opinion. If you disagree, let me know. If you do agree, let me know. I, I'm always curious to hear your opinions on these. Would I, would I be the problem for not letting my wife know when I go hang out with a new friend group? Okay, let's see. To preface this, I'm currently on the other side of the globe for the next year for work. Typically, I tell my wife everything. How my day went, what's new, any spicy gossip going on, etc. Been married for seven years and have a strong level of trust built up. Never cheated on her and have no desire to. Got three beautiful children and I would never dream of doing anything to jeopardize my ability to see them. Recently, I found a group of locals who hang out at a cafe. I'm in a dry country, so zero alcohol, and the lo local socialization is done in cafes or malls. Just stumbled upon the group. They saw I was a foreigner and basically took me under their wing and see me as one of them now. I told my wife about the group, of course, told her the names, and that it's a mature group of people, ages 30 to 45, bankers, government workers, lawyers, etc., 
all married or actively in relationships. It's a mix of male and female. Maybe none of that back info was necessary, but I'm asking y'all's opinion on this because the past few times I've hung out with him, my wife says stuff like, You haven't had time to talk to me today. You've sure been busy today. Or when I told her on the phone yesterday, I always call her any time I drive places because I like talking to her, that I was on my way back to my place. After I said I was out late, she said in her typical sarcastic tone, Hmm, that must be nice. I'm not... No. I'm out here not seeing my children, working every day, and I just found that I like a group of people that I can spend time with and experience normalcy for once or twice a week. Every time I've hung out with them, there's some kind of backhanded comment about, must be nice, or, wow, you sure have time for friends out there. Each little comment like that just makes me want to replace I'm going to the cafe to hang out with I'm going to XX place to do XX work. I won't be allowed to have my phone on me. I hate lying to her, but if she's just going to get annoyed every time I'm tempted to... Well, that's a sentence fragment. <laughs> okay. But if she's just going to get annoyed every time... Oh, then I'm tempted to. That makes more sense. I call my wife and kids every single day when I get off work, and I'll spend hours on the phone with them. I don't see why me going to see new friends is any reason for her to get an attitude. So, would I be the problem if I stopped telling her this one thing that I do? Yes. Now, that's not to say that she's completely in the right here either. Passive-aggressive comments go nowhere because they're not truly addressing the root of the problem. Um, the way I see it, and obviously I can't speak for his wife, but I'm assuming she, she has the not even the brunt, the full responsibility of 100% of dealing with three kids the whole year that he's gone. It's not his fault. It's for work. I'm sure they discussed it before leaving. But that's a lot. And in her mind, he does have all this free time. And frankly, he does. Because he's not at home dealing with the kids and the schoolwork and the homework and just... The day-to-day -day heavy lifting of parenting. It's not his fault. It's not her fault. But he would be the problem here if he started lying. As annoying as passive-aggressive comments are, lying is one of the hardest things to come back from in a relationship. Even though it's innocent. It makes the other person in that relationship go back and question everything. I don't care if you have never in your life told a lie to that person, especially over something as innocent as this. They're going to literally go back and question everything. It is the one of the number one best ways to ruin a relationship. Kind of take that with a grain of salt for me because I am single. <laughs> But I do have, you know, a history with dating and relationships. And never once has anything good ever come from lying. It's always, always devastated a relationship. Now, they definitely need to work on their communication. Because the wife, I am thinking, is starting to get very resentful. And that is also a relationship killer. So they definitely need to address the elephant in the room. It's not the new friends. I have a feeling it's that she's probably feeling burnt out and extremely resentful that even though it's not his fault, he has all this free time to socialize and relax. I know he misses his kids, according to what he says, and I don't have reason to doubt that, of course. I don't know these people, but... He misses his kids. I'm sure he misses his wife and his home life. But the fact of the matter is, he does have a lot more free time right now. So that, I think, is kind of the crux of this, what's been presented, this problem, this situation. And that is what needs to be addressed. I will never recommend lying as a solution in a problem, especially in a relationship. Because I 
pretty sure I've said it before on here. One of my favorite quotes is, there are three things that cannot stay hidden for long. The sun, the moon, and the truth. It will eventually come out that he has been seeing this friend group and she will start to question everything. And even if he says, well, I only lied to protect you or I only lied because you were having these passive aggressive comments, it will call into question everything and no good will come of it. There is no reason to start lying. Just make some time on, I don't know if they're on different time zones, but make some time to sit down and just communicate. Lying is not the answer. You need to be able to communicate with your spouse, especially when you are away for a year on the other side of the world. Communication needs to be stronger than even face-to-face, day-to-day communication. And it feels like the communication here is lacking. Communicate with your partner. If you have to, see if you can pull in a marriage counselor. Um, If you can figure out one that will do a virtual meeting on some kind of, uh, again, I don't know the time zones here, but there needs to be, at this point, probably a third party. Because if you are considering lying as being the solution, things are pretty, pretty far gone. And that is not a solution. So, that's my opinion. Um... Am I the problem for not telling my friend about a job opening? I, 30 female, and Beth, 34 female, met at work two and a half years ago. Last year, Beth got fired due to downsizing in the company, and since then couldn't find a new job. She's looking not only to find a new job, but a better role as a manager that, on paper, she has the skills for. About two months ago, I was approached by someone I know and sort of got headhunted for a discreet role in a different company. Better title, better salary, and basically what Beth looked for this past year. I got recruited, and on my last day of work, I posted on Instagram story that I quit. Beth saw the story and texted me about it, asking me why I quit, asks about the new company and the new job, and instead of congratulating me, She told me I wasn't a good friend. Basically, she said that I should have told her about this role because I knew this is exactly what she was looking for and she needed to have it because she's been unemployed for a year. I didn't even look for a new job and I should have passed on the opportunity and give them her name instead. Later, I told my friends, other friends from work about this conversation I had with Beth and they told me they get where she's coming from. I know I didn't need a new job, but is it my fault I wanted to get ahead and didn't think about her? Am I the problem? No. Sorry, Beth. Um, You know, for all we know, Beth applied for this job and just didn't get it. I get wanting to have a better job than the one that you previously had, but if you're so desperate for a job, any job is better than no job. And frankly, having a year gap on your resume, I can't imagine that looking too good. You know, you can certainly have any job and still continue to look for the level up job that you want. But as she's finding out, they don't just fall out of the sky. (laughs) So if I were in that position, I would like to think, and again, you know, nobody knows what they're going to do until they're in that situation. But I would certainly like to think I'd be happy for my friend, you know, be like, This is not the only position in the whole world. You know, there's other positions out there. So, you know, considering especially that this poster um, did not go looking for this job, it literally fell into their lap. How can Beth be upset about that? What are they supposed to do? No, no, I'm sorry. I know you're going to offer me more money, a better title, a better job, better everything. I'm set with not having that, thank you. But my friend over here, who, for all we know, has already applied for this position, you know, or you has her name has already come across your desk at some point, you know, you should give this to her. You know what the company's going to do? This can go to whoever's next on their list. Just because there's no reason for Beth to think that even if this poster gave the company her name, they're going to hire her. That... 
doesn't sound to me like Beth is a very good friend. Maybe she's just in a hard spot right now and she's frustrated and lashed out. That could certainly be. But I don't think that this poster is at all the problem for bettering themselves, bettering their opportunities, and frankly, having a better job. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, I don't think that they're the problem here. I think Beth needs to get any job while she continues to look for her, her dream job. Am I the problem for not supporting my wife's decision to punish our son and letting him go to a party that will be tonight? This is a throwaway, but this involves some absolute high school drama nonsense that someone my age should not have to deal with, but maybe I'm tripping and missing something. So, here I am. I, 45 male, share a daughter, 17 female, and son, 15 male, with my wife, 41 female. My wife's best friend, 40 female, has two daughters, 18 female and 15 female. My wife's best friend moved to our town about six years ago. My wife and her best friend have been not so subtly pulling for the two 15-year-olds to end up together. I find this weird and low-key creepy. About two years ago, wife's best friend's youngest daughter appeared to have developed a crush on our son. My son talked to me about it, and he had zero interest. So we discussed how to tactfully but firmly let her down. She has approached him again a number of times over the last couple of years, and he has reaffirmed his lack of interest. This past summer, my wife's best friend's oldest daughter turned 18. Her parents went all out for her birthday. It was a whole weekend of festivities and events. One of the events was a couple's dinner for the oldest daughter and all of her friends and couples. The younger daughter of wife's best friend wanted to go to the dinner, but did not have anyone to go with. She asked my son, and he agreed to go, but only as friends, and just this one time. So they went together. After the dinner, the couples all watched 10 Things I Hate About You together. It was my son's first time seeing it, and he commented that he thought the Heath Ledger singing the singing scene was cool. This is important later. My business partner, 44 male, every year, for the last five years, throws a huge Halloween party. All our employees are invited, along with close friends and family. The party requires a costume. And at this party, there are prizes for best individual costume, group costume, and couples costume. My wife's best friend and her family are obviously invited every year. This year... The Halloween party is tonight, October 26th. So, let me get to the reason I'm here. About a month ago, my son is at school, and comes towards him is my wife's best friend's youngest daughter, with a whole song and dance routine. She ends it by asking him to be her date for the Halloween party. My son was so frustrated and reiterated for everyone to hear that he is not interested in her like that at all. Of course, it being high school, some kids laughed and she ran off crying. She's been bullied pretty badly because of it. My wife's best friend is livid and thinks our son owes her daughter an apology. My wife agrees and thinks, at minimum, he needs to defend her against the bullying. My son has said that for two years he has told her he's not interested and reiterated it over and over. At this point, he thinks it's kind of harassing to him, and it is not his role to defend her harassment of him. I agree with my son. My wife and I have had a number of disagreements about it since it happened. Well, things have intensified in the last couple of weeks or so because another girl, who his wife's best friend's daughter apparently does not like, asked our son to be her date for the party, and he agreed. They're doing a pretty dope couple's costume. This has really pissed off my wife because she thinks he should, at least, not go to the party with another girl out of respect. I think that is ridiculous. I plan on driving them to the party with me. My wife now does not want to go to the party, saying that I'm the problem and raising our son to be one. Whew. Okay. 
I have very strong feelings about this. Let's reverse the genders here. Let's say the poster and his wife have a daughter who's 15 and the husband's best friend's son is relentlessly asking her out nonstop and putting on this big song and dance at the school, almost trying to force her to say yes. That is problematic. That is way not okay. A no is a no and needs to be respected. <laughs> I can't imagine how or wife, wife, I'm so flustered and, and upset by this, how or why the wife or her best friend feels like this situation is okay and to encourage this from the daughter because the son apparently has been very adamant and very clear in his no. I don't see where there's any room for debate on this. No means no. The daughter asked him out. He said no. Apparently she's continued to ask him out and he has said no. She put on this whole public debacle. He said no. I don't feel like he owes her an apology. I don't think he should encourage or support any bullying of her. And I, it doesn't say that he is. So, you know, that's he may not be. But I don't think bullying is okay. And if the parents have a problem with this, they need to take it up with the school. It should not be up to the son to try and stop it. He shouldn't be encouraging it at all. And if he sees it happen, be like, you know, knock it off. But it is not okay to encourage this, this girl to continue to pursue this boy who has been very clear in his refusal. It's frankly creepy and not teaching this girl how to handle rejection she's going to be in for a rude awakening because rejection happens on the daily. It just does. I mean, not everyone is for everyone. You know, just because you like someone does not mean they're going to like you back. Um, and she needs to learn this lesson. And it's unfortunate she chose to make it so public, but that was definitely her choice. And she chose it. And now she has to choose the repercussions of it. Again, bullying is not okay. They need to talk to the school about that. But... It's not on the sun to clean this mess up. I think the dad is firmly in the right. And frankly, if the wife continues to support this behavior and get upset with the son, it, it might even be worthy of a separation because the dad definitely needs to continue to stick up for the son here. The son has done nothing wrong and could be putting himself or, or find himself in a dangerous situation if the mom continues to push her son to be with this daughter of her best friend. It could be really, really scary for the son. Um, and the mom just seems to be in her own little universe about this. You know, I mean, you can't force love to happen. <laughs> you just can't. And the son is not interested in the daughter. And frankly, the more the mom pushes this, the more the son's just going to stand firm. So the parents need to back all the way out of the kids' dating lives. Um, and frankly, I think the mom owes the son an apology. That is a very scary situation. Um, and I think the dad is doing the right thing by sticking up for him. Am I the problem for not giving away my child's rare backpack? My 13-year-old daughter has been obsessed with lounge fly backpacks for the last three years. Everyone has bought some for her. She has 50 or so and is constantly showing them off. She has a large following on Instagram and TikTok showing off her bags. I monitor her activities and help her post. She does not even have access to the accounts on her own. My sister, Stevie, just started dating this man who has a daughter, Zoe, who is 15. Stevie has had financial issues due to, his, due to her excuse me, lifestyle habits. I believe her boyfriend is in the same boat, but both are recovering. 
However, Zoe has a birthday coming up, and Stevie wanted me to give her one of my daughter's bags that she saw on Instagram, because it is Zoe's favorite character, and the bag has been discontinued. She showed me the price on eBay. It's about $500, and Zoe really wants that bag. The thing is, it was one of my daughter's first bags, and she loves that character. It was also my daughter's property, and it's not like I can just give away her things. I told her I would split the cost of a new bag for Zoe, if that's what my sister wanted, since she's short of funds. But my sister insisted that she should give Zoe the rare bag and put Zoe on my daughter's TikTok. I told her the TikTok is my daughter's project, and I'm not putting Zoe on it. I have this conversation with my youngest children, who are 7 and 10, that their sister doesn't have to include them in the video, if she doesn't want to. My sister thinks I'm being selfish about the bag and not including, including Zoe on her famous TikToks. I told my sister she's being ridiculous, and we've never even met Zoe, and making these demands is ridiculous. My sister said I and my daughter are spoiled and bougie and that she will never ask for help again. My mother understands and sided with my daughter and I, so my sister made a big TikTok about cutting toxic family members off. It's kind of ridiculous of her, and I'm not talking to her now. And my mom told her that she needs to apologize for this. My sister acts like I'm bullying her and Zoe, but again, I've never even met the teenager. I don't know if I even have to go into this. The sister is clearly in the wrong and being absolutely ridiculous. Um, given that Stevie has already looked up the price of this rare bag for $500 and insisting that's the one that has to be given to Zoe, kind of makes me wonder if she wants it just to sell it for the money, um, which is devastating because it belongs to her niece. You know, what a terribly selfish thing to do, um, especially given the fact that they've never even met Zoe. It was very generous of this poster to offer to go in 50-50 for a lounge fly bag because those are expensive, even on their own. Um, no, this poster is not the problem, and good for her for standing up for her daughter. She's right. That bag belongs to her daughter. It's not hers to give away, even if she wanted to. Um... And who demands to be on someone's TikTok if you've never met them? You know, if I were Zoe, that would be deeply embarrassing. And I can't imagine that she's aware that this request is being made on her behalf. But it sounds like Stevie is jealous. And I am kind of wondering if she wants to sell that bag just for the cash, which, again, is just deeply upsetting because it belongs to her niece. So literally that's stealing from her niece if that's the case. But... No, she has no rights to demand anything that belongs to the poster or her daughter, her, uh, Stevie's niece. But I would back way off of that relationship with Stevie because it sounds like she wouldn't be above maybe trying to steal it. You know, that could be a bit of a jump. I don't know, but she seems to have her heart set on that bag worth $500 for whatever reason, so... Uh, the next one is, am I the problem for getting my coworker fired after she kept trying to prove my service dog is fake? I have a medical alert service dog named Max who helps with a serious heart condition. He's literally saved my life multiple times by alerting before I pass out. I started a new office job three months ago and everything was fine until, let's call her Karen started her crusade against Max. It started small. She'd loudly announce, pets aren't allowed in the office every time she saw us. I repeatedly explained that Max is a service dog, not a pet, and showed her his documentation. She then started telling everyone I was obviously faking because I look too young to be disabled. Things escalated fast. She tried to test Max by dropping food near him. He's trained to ignore it. She reported me to HR weekly. But the worst part, she started purposefully wearing strong perfume and spraying air freshener around my desk, which triggers my condition. Max alerted three times in one day because of this. 
the final straw. I found out she was taking photos of me and Max and posting them on the Facebook group about fake service dogs, asking for ways to expose me. She included my full name and workplace. I took screenshots and went to HR. They fired her on the spot for harassment and creating a hostile work environment. Now my inbox is flooded with messages from her friends and family saying I'm the problem for getting a mother of three fired over a dog and that I should have just worked from home if I'm so sick. Here's the thing. I actually feel horrible she lost her job. Her kids aren't at fault here, but she literally put my life at risk with the perfume stunts and doxing me online was scary. I wouldn't feel bad, frankly. And I'm a single mom. This woman had no right whatsoever to even try to call to do any of this, frankly. That is absolutely ludicrous. But she literally tried to kill you. And I don't think that's that much of a, uh, an overreaction or an overstatement by trying to trigger her heart condition. Who does that? Are you kidding me? If you're upset about a service animal being at work, you take it to HR. You don't try to out the person. You don't try to prove that the service dog is fake. What? That... My jaw was on the floor reading this. Look, if she has a problem with it, she should just work from home. The company hired her. The company is aware that she has a service dog. I am sure she had to provide the paperwork for this. Unless you own the company, you don't get to have a say-so in anything that your coworkers do, wear, bring to the office. If you have a problem with it, take it to HR. If HR doesn't handle it, you find another job. Those are your options when you don't work for yourself. You don't declare war against your coworker, basically. So, no, I don't think this poster got this woman fired. Her own actions got her fired, and rightfully so. That is lunacy. And frankly, I would report any friends or family members to HR and be like, look, what can we do here? Because they are now retaliating and creating a hostile work environment. I would report every single one of them every single time they continue on with this nonsense. That really irritates me, clearly. Ah, so, am I the problem for choosing my cleaning lady as my guest of honor at my medical school graduation instead of my stepmom. Some background. Maria was our cleaning lady from when I was eight until I was 16. But she was so much more than that. When I was struggling with math, she'd stay late to help me. Turns out she was a math teacher in her home country but couldn't get her credentials transferred. When I was lonely because my dad worked late and my stepmom was busy with her own kids, Maria would teach me to cook and tell me stories. The big secret? Every month for the past eight years, Maria's been using half her paycheck from her other cleaning jobs to anonymously donate to my college fund. I only found out because now I'm doing my residency at the hospital where her son works as a nurse, and he accidentally mentioned it. When I confronted Maria about it, she broke down and showed me how she'd been keeping a scrapbook of all my achievements since I was eight. Report cards, newspaper clippings from when I won the science fair, and even the thank you note I wrote her when I was ten. She said seeing my potential helped her put her own son through nursing school, and she wanted to make sure I had the same chance. My medical school graduation is coming up, and we get two VIP tickets for front row seats. I gave one to my dad and one to Maria. My stepmom is furious, saying she raised me. She didn't. She was barely around. And that I'm humiliating her by choosing the help over her. She's demanding that I give Maria a regular seat in the back. I refused. Maria literally cleaned other people's houses at night to help put me through school. She's wearing that VIP corsage and sitting in the front row at my graduation. My dad supports my decision, 
but the extended family is blowing up my phone, saying I'm the problem for disrespecting my stepmom and making a scene. Maria is even offering to sit in the back to keep the peace, but I won't hear of it. And they should not. Maria definitely, undoubtedly deserves to be front and center. And I'm glad that her dad, or his dad, um, I don't think it specifies their dad, and that their dad supports this decision. Um, what a special person. It sounds like, frankly, the dad should be well rid of the stepmom, but, you know, that's not what this post is about. Maria sounds lovely, and she has definitely uh, earned her seat in the VIP section. Not even, of course, monetarily, but just being here for this, this poster as they went through their whole life, well, you know, 8 to 16, but it sounds like, obviously, they kept in touch. Um, what a special lady. That's really lovely. Am I the problem for not forgiving my best friend, 31 male, after he cheated with my fiancé, 29 female, and then asked me to be his best man. I, 33 male, have been with my fiancé, everything just fell off, have been with my fiancé, 29 female, for seven years. We were planning our wedding, and my best friend, 31 male, whom I've known since childhood, was set to be my best man. Everything was perfect. Then I found out they had been cheating on me for almost a year behind my back. When I confronted them, they apologized and claimed it was a mistake that just happened. But they still wanted to move forward with their lives together. Now, to top it all off, he's asked me to be his best man for their wedding. He says it's a chance for me to show that I've forgiven them and that we're still family. I've cut them both out of my life, so I'm getting flack from mutual friends who think I'm being petty and need to move on. So, am I the problem for refusing to forgive them or be involved in any part of their lives? No, and I would cut ties with anyone who says otherwise. That is absolutely ridiculous. It's not a mistake. That was a full year-long relationship. A mistake is forgetting to pick up the milk on the way home, <laughs> not having a whole secret relationship behind your fiancé's back. What were they going to do? They were planning the wedding. Are they just going to get married and then have the, the now wife continue this whole relationship? And what kind of best friend does that? Mm -mm. This poster is well rid of both of them, and thank goodness this came out before the wedding because divorce is a huge pain. So, so like I said, good riddance to both of them. Sometimes the trash takes itself out. And frankly, anyone who says that this poster is being selfish or petty or needs to move on needs to cut ties with them too. Because if your friends are not there supporting you, then you need new friends. Might be a little bit harsh, but that is the only option at this point, I would think. Because what friends are going to say that? With friends like that, who needs enemies? Again, you know, I would love to hear your take on any of these. If you agree with me, if you disagree with me, I would love to hear that too. But in the meantime, that is all I have for tonight. I hope you've enjoyed. I appreciate you coming back. You could be anywhere else and you chose to spend your time with us. So I hope you have a wonderful night, a wonderful week, and I hope to see you back next week. Good night.